Happy Thursday. I hope you're doing so well and that the week has gone really great for you and that you're getting everything you wanted out of this week. If you're new here, my name is Jesse. I am the host of the Renaissance Era podcast, which has become my absolute baby. I am so glad you're here. I'm so grateful that you found me. And if you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, please do. Renaissance Era is all about your late 20s, early 30s, rediscovering who you are, following your passions, building a life that you love, and taking the people that you love with you, learning how to let go of things, shed people, bad relationships, and move on as the best, most positive version of yourself as is humanly possible. Today's going to be a little bit of a different episode just because it is the beginning of the Jewish high holidays this week, and The next two episodes are going to be more kind of food for thought. So today we're going to talk about Rosh Hashanah. If you're unfamiliar, Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the Jewish holidays. So today, the day I'm publishing this is September 14th, which means that Rosh Hashanah starts at sundown tomorrow, Friday, September 15th, because I'm posting this in the secular year 2023. For those of you who don't know, Rosh Hashanah is when... Jews believe the universe was born. So it's the day that God created Adam and Eve. And we believe that this is the beginning of the Jewish year. So if you don't know, Jews follow a lunar calendar, which is separate from today's secular calendar, which is Roman in origin. And it is observed on the first two days of the Jewish month of Tishrei. So Tishrei, the first and the second. It ushers in a new year. So it's 2023 for the average person. But for me, it's 5784. We celebrate Rosh Hashanah with candle lighting and meals with your family, prayer services, which include a shofar. So if you don't know what a shofar is, it's a ram's horn that you blow through. There's different ways of blowing it. It's seen as like a big honor to do it. And Rosh Hashanah is important because it's the beginning of the year. So we treat it kind of like January 1st. And how you bring in your Rosh Hashanah, we believe, impacts how you how the rest of your year is going to go. So depending on your denomination of Judaism, most of us call it Rosh Hashanah. Lots of people call it um, Yom Haidin, so the Day of Judgment, because on this day, the most devout Jews believe that this is the day that God decides your fate for the year ahead. So it's decided whether or not you live or if you die. But for me, the meaning that I've taken from this is it's a lesson in being grateful. We should be grateful that we get to wake up every day and live this life, no matter how challenging it can be, no matter how tough it seems. We still get to wake up every morning and choose to be here and get to be here. And being grateful is an energy that you can carry. So if you believe in God or a higher power with no name or just an energy of creation, this is that thing that makes it so you can go forward. So on Rosh Hashanah, I normally during prayer service, because there's always a section for silent prayer, I ask for a good year, a year that isn't too turbulent, a year that brings joy and happiness And then I think about all the things that I'm grateful for from the past year. So things that I'm grateful for from the past year. I am grateful that I have so many opportunities for my education. I am grateful that I get to take wonderful trips, like my trip to Italy that I went on. I'm grateful for my wonderful friends, particularly my friends Shannon and Jordan, who have kept me mentally afloat over the past couple of months. I'm grateful for people who I work with who then became friends. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for the roof over my head while we're in a housing crisis. I'm grateful for the fact that I can put food on my table while people are struggling to do so. All of the above. 
you have to count your blessings and remember why you're grateful. It leads to a more positive mindset. I try to practice this every day, but even if people were to just do it on this day, I believe it has an impact. It recalls, it makes you recall what good has happened to you and to focus on the positive and to try and bring more of that into your life versus the negative. I invite you to turn Rosh Hashanah into an opportunity. It is an opportunity for change and growth and gratitude, manifestation, all of that. It's a wonderful start to what's going to be, hopefully for everyone, a really, really beautiful year. Because I'm doing things that are slightly different on this podcast, because it's going to be short, um, because it's the high holidays, I am going to finish with a poem about liturgy. So in Judaism, this is called Ayun Tefillah. So it's an interpretation of liturgy, and it's actually a poem. So I will be reading you a poem called The Head of the Year by Marge Piercy, and I invite you to think about what it means. The moon is dark tonight, a new moon for a new year. It is hollow and hungers to be full. It is the black zero of beginning. Now you must void yourself of injuries, insults, incursions. Go with empty hands to those you have hurt and make amends. It's not too late. It is early and about to grow. Now is the time to do what you know you must and have feared to begin. Your face is dark, too, as you turn inward to face yourself, the hidden twin of all you must grow to be. Forgive the dead year. Forgive yourself. What will be wants to push through your fingers. The light you seek hides in your belly. The light you crave longs to stream from your eyes. You are the moon that will wax in new goodness.